much for that uh, kind uh, 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 introduction and, and hello everybody and I look forward to talking to you about Abraham Lincoln today except I must start by telling you that standing at this forum in this place there is no excuse for my being here. The only person who should be here is Bill Miller, your own uh, fellow who is one of the great Lincoln scholars in the country and it really moved me that, that Bill would ask me to appear at his forum uh, today uh, and I accept only because it seems to me so fine that there should be a collaboration between the Virginia Foundation for the Humanities uh, and this wonderful institution. We both serve the same uh, Charlottesville intellectual community. We both try to bring the humanities to the uh, service of <clears throat> the general public, not just to fellow scholars. Uh, <clears throat> and I have tremendously enjoyed my friendship with Bill Miller uh, and our collaboration on our two Lincoln projects. Uh, and I'm <clears throat> just um, very glad to be here at his forum, at his invitation, to once again make for a stronger collaboration between our two uh, institutions. I'm just about to publish a book on the South and the coming of the Civil War that I've worked on for a long time. And I've started a project on Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and my project on Abraham Lincoln is based on his growth as president. I think he starts out making some very serious mistakes as president. <laughs> I think he starts out not at all being a great president uh, and ends up being a fabulous president. And I'm interested in that transition. Uh, and it seems to me a particularly important transition for this particular audience that is so interested in modern politics uh, and in the modern presidency. Because I think that this story of Lincoln's growth in office uh, gives us a barometer by which to judge our presidents uh, over the last 50 years uh, and to judge where they are succeeding and where, where they are uh, not succeeding. So what better place to give my, only my second public talk on Abraham Lincoln than to a forum that is interested in that crucial question, what does make for a great president? And I hope I can show you today that Lincoln helps us understand that and helps us understand the presidents of our own uh, time. I only can talk about one piece of my book today, uh, but I think it's one of the most interesting pieces. Uh, and it's, uh, it's on Lincoln's growth towards the 13th Amendment. Or I should say Lincoln's growth away from his first two 13th Amendments. You all know about the final 13th Amendment. It freed the slaves and put into the Constitution a permanent way of freeing the slaves, whereas Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation two years earlier had only uh, temporarily possibly and only until the war lasted possibly uh, freed the uh, slaves. Lincoln is very important in the final production of that final 13th Amendment. He twists some arms in Congress to get the necessary two-thirds vote in Congress to uh, pass the amendment. Uh, and it's one of the final triumphs in office that he should achieve this uh, 13th Amendment, forever freeing the slaves. And it is thus so startling, at least to me, and this is what started me on the whole project, to read his first 13th Amendment which he first publicly proposed uh, in his inaugural address of March 4th, 1861. And that constitutional amendment, that proposed 13th Amendment, which had already passed Congress and which Lincoln gave his blessings to on March 4th, 1861, declared that the Constitution should never be amended, never be amended to allow the federal government to abolish slavery. Lincoln's first 13th Amendment declares that there shall be no constitutional amendment ever abolishing uh, slavery. By the way, it's perfectly constitutional to do that because the Constitution in its very amending clause says that no state shall lose its, its capacity to have two senators by a constitutional amendment unless that state agrees to be defrauded of its two uh, senators. So in the Constitution itself, there is a provision for an unamendable uh, level of the, uh, of the uh, Constitution. 
And that first 13th Amendment seems to me a bookend around Lincoln's presidency, forever stopping the federal government from abolishing slavery, contrasting so amazingly with the final 13th Amendment, forever abolishing slavery, and as we'll see right in the middle, there's still a st more startling Lincoln proposal for a 13th uh, Amendment.